Hi everybody, welcome again to Wise Kong Driving and today we're looking at the Volkswagen Vento. Now the Vento belongs in the same category, in the same ballpark, yeah, as the Toyota Vios and also the Honda City plus the Nissan Almera and the Mazda 2. Yeah, these are the cars in this category and this is probably the most expensive of them all at 92,000 ringgit. What it has going for it is, it has a 7-speed DSG direct shift gearbox from the Volkswagen Group and also a 1.2-litre turbocharged engine. Horsepower is 105, but the turbocharger gives it a lot of torque. 175 newton meters of torque, which is the highest in this category of cars. Yeah, So that means this is a promise of spirited driving and also good fuel economy when you want it yeah because this car is rated at 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers that's the rated fuel consumption of course if you drive like an idiot like me you're not going to get that uh, but uh, that is the rated fuel consumption so you got to take it at that okay let's move on and have a look at what makes this car tick Okay, taking a look at the car from the front, it's got a very uh, reasonably wide body. Yeah? It's a little bit under 1.8 meters. And I like the lines of the car because it's uh, nice and neat lines. And you see here, you have uh, LED lights and also LED daytime running lights. So the this is very Volkswagen. So uh, this is the face of the Volkswagen and it looks pretty nice to me. So the shape is a, the shape is a very sedan type and uh, nothing fancy about the shape but this is a shape that will stay for a very long time. It is not something that will go out of fashion. Yeah. So if you look at the B-class sedans, they are all in this type of shape, uh, reasonably short front. Uh, and then the uh, cab forward, so the cabin goes right up to the front wheels, then a sloping glass, a nice long roof, and as big as possible passenger compartment, then the rear axle, and then a short little boot, and this one looks like, well, if you looked at it with your squinted eyes, you might think that this could be a, a miniaturized Volkswagen Passat. Okay, of course the Passat has got slightly different lights, but the profile of this car is very uh, Volkswagen, yeah, it's very Volkswagen. It, you want to look at it and you know it belongs to the family. Okay, so looking at the sides, you of course see that these are 16 inch wheels, okay, and uh, it's got ventilated this in the front with a reasonably large single pot calipers okay so the tire size is 21545 r16 so nowadays the cars with 16 inch tires will have a better ride because the wheels are bigger and so if you look at the car from an overall point of view yeah you must consider that these are 16 inch wheels so the car looks proportionate that's very important you're gonna have a big car with tiny wheels or big wheels and a tiny car so this car looks very nice and proportionate and you can see the doors are wide and long and later we'll see how they open. Then we have the back and at the back you see uh, drum brakes and what looks like, yes, it's a torsion, torsion beam arrangement while the front is McPherson struts. So moving over to the back part of the car. I've been told don't say back side of the car. This is the back part of the car. You can see the Vento badging. And now you know what I mean when they say it's a miniaturized uh, uh, Passat, yeah? But you can see that the rear is very much in tune with all the cars in this category. It reminds you of one of the Japanese cars or something like that, yeah? And here you see here, uh, this is the 180 TSI 
which signifies the torque that it can deliver and yeah it's 185 sorry 175 so it's quite close to 180 and you can see here this is the vento so uh, whilst we are here let's take a look at the back so one thing good about this is I see a lock for the rear which is very convenient a key for the rear and also a handle to open and you can see here the reverse camera so we know it has a reverse camera this is the inside of the boot now I'm going to show you something you open here you open the boot it opens up to here and to make it stay you push it up and it stays up like this so it now opens into a very wide aperture and you can put your stuff in so the boot is pretty big 454 liters of boot space and of course you can see that the rear seats split and fold and here up here is the area of strength this is a cross member that triangulates the body and helps to make it more rigid and over on the inside here you see a full size pair on a steel rim i think but it is a different profile it's a 14 inch tire and it's higher profile so it is the same size overall diameter but it's not meant to be part of the main tire huh? it's only meant to be a spare tire and down here you have a safety triangle and a little box for you to keep your stuff okay so this is the back part of the car we won't say backside anymore entry to the car is through the key fob where you press the the unlock button like this but here's the trick yeah you if on a hot day you can press the thing and you hold the button and what happens is your glasses will wind down all four glasses will wind down that helps you to cool down the car you know let the hot air out and uh, similarly if you lock the car I'm gonna lock the car and then I'm gonna press and hold the lock button and you can see the glass coming up that's pretty neat yeah so it's a very convenient feature uh, not many cars have it all the more expensive ones have it okay so now we know that there's no remote uh, what do you call there's no uh, keyless entry and no keyless start but we'll open it again and what we're going to do is we are going to have a look at the engine first so here's the catch okay here's the engine of the Volkswagen Vento and you can see here this is a uh, looks like a single overhead cam yes it's a single overhead cam and is the brochure says it's direct injection and you can see there the intake is on this side with plastic intake yes it's four cylinder and there is the turbocharger the all important turbocharger which is here under this cover it's hot yeah so this is the 1.2 liter TSI this engine is no stranger to us because we've seen it in the Polo uh, TSI yep and the engine is a very very well proven engine and uh, uh, steering is electrical yeah I can't see uh, it's down there it's down there right down there and the motor is somewhere there okay so that's the ABS pump so we know it's got an ABS and this actuator is uh, yeah this is an electronically controlled uh, turbo actuator the wastegate actuator okay so this is a pretty neat engine batteries in the front and let's see the air comes in here's the air intake of the car which is up here up here so it's quite high up to this one which is about a bit above the knee length yeah so I suppose you can take about 12 inches of water yeah so if you have flood water to go through as long as your bumper is not below the water yeah okay up to here I think the water should be okay because the intake is here so don't go too fast more to be safe you should be around half the bumper lah, which is about yeah maybe 16 inches of water maximum yeah 
uh, anything more than that, I wouldn't recommend that you try. Well, the reason I'm saying this is because of the flash floods we have. So owners want to know, yeah? So you can see there, that's the intake. Here's the intake. And that's where the air goes into the, through the air cleaner. Then it goes into the turbo. Then from the turbo, it goes straight to the intake. So there is no intercooler for this, yeah? So this turbocharger doesn't have an intercooler. Alright, so this engine is supposed to give you 5.5 litres per 100 kilometres. So every five, every 100 kilometres will cost you 5.5 litres of fuel. So 5 litres of fuel will be about 5 times 2.2, about 11 ringgit plus another 5.5, another about 12 ringgit uh, per 100 kilometres, which means about 12 cents. To be saved 13 cents per kilometer of course uh, if you run the aircon a lot and you stop a lot then it goes up yeah but the potential is 5.5 which is quite achievable okay let's go into the car so you have your electric windows and also your lock and this is the door lock and also the wing mirror controls now this car is pretty straightforward nothing much but uh, it's, the quality is in the small details that they put in. So this is the seat. These are fabric seats, but designed pretty good. And you can see here, that says airbag. These are the side airbags yeah, for the front uh, driver and passenger. So there's two. And also, here's looking at the seats. Okay. And then, of course, starting is by the key. Uh, you have headlights and they don't look like they're automatic and your wipers are here okay. important thing to note uh, no pedal shifters so then we'll go inside and this is the meter very very uh, basic but I like because the more basic it is, the less things there are to go wrong. I'm going to start the engine. Okay, so there is a multi display in the center. Okay, so you can see here the meter. This is the speedo, speedometer. And it goes up to maximum 240. I think this car can hit about 200, but we'll check that out later. And uh, then this is the fuel consumption. It's, it shows 9 because we drove in the city and also I stopped the car and now we're running the air conditioner with the car not moving, yeah? The time is 16.40, that's 4.40 in the afternoon and we are in park and they gave us the car with slightly more than half tank, okay? Then on the left is the ref counter and the hand brake. Uh, P means the parking brake is on and the this is the air con. Uh, louver for the driver and the second one for the driver also and this side is for the front passenger okay then you have traction control off here this is a demister and then you have your small screen here that's about maybe seven inch or six inch yeah or six point something inch your radio turn it on okay sorry <laughs> Okay, we can't turn it on because of the copyright issues. And there you have one, two, three, four, five channels to choose from. Is there more than five? Yeah, so you can do that. And then, of course, there's a station list, FM band, tuning, setup. Uh, you have phone connectivity, no phone connected. Okay, I'm not going to connect phone. Then you have apps, connect app, connect device yeah, using USB. So USB connectivity here. Then you can set up your sound, language, your keyboard, things like that. This is a radio switch. And then this is the media. Okay, media you have to stick in the USB here. And then there's a SD card. This one looks like an input jack. So pretty nice and simple. And then the aircon control. This is a climate control. And it's digital. You can check the temperature that you want. Okay, and then this is what is this 
auto auto aircon you will turn it on but we're not going auto we're going to go down and then you have your demister this is a seat oh heat up the seat wow no i'm not going to heat up the seat and then you sorry oh this is a demister the aircon comes out through the front okay sorry my mistake is not the seat heater <laughs> and then this is to have the aircon come out through the vents in front and also aircon come out through the vents on the bottom so you can see here uh, front and bottom okay i'm going to turn off the defrost so there's no air coming at the top and then you have what is this only the front okay then you have the close the ventilator and of course this is the aircon off and on pretty nice and simple and then you uh, the dashboard here is hard plastic okay i just did some rectification work on my golf that is nine nine years old or ten years old and i'm beginning to like hard plastics you know why because hard plastics last forever the rubberized plastics can end up melting over time yeah so this is nice textured but it's hard plastic and i'm beginning to love them then there's a glove compartment here and the good news is yeah yes i can see it the air con vent goes through there so you can actually keep cold drinks you can keep cold drinks in your glove compartment well you make your gloves very cold i think yeah so the passenger seat is also mechanical and the handbrake is also mechanical now let's go to the back and we can see a bit better okay we are sitting at the back but we're going to take another look at the front so here is what the cockpit looks like the yellow thing is the cloth i use to wipe the car because it's raining yeah uh, wet outside and the steering is flat bottom the size is about 14 14 and a half inch is the slightly bigger steering wheel than normal they could do with a smaller one but i think this is a common size steering wheel for the volkswagen group and you have of course your switches and control for the phone on the steering so this is a nice uh, steering wheel very volkswagen and of course you can see the airbag there and the airbag there up there so this makes this car have uh, four airbags so here's a quick sweep of the front and it looks just like that pretty nice and simple very little clutter very practical and of course it's cheaper to make this way so they can keep the car competitive now this little uh, looking at the gear lever now yeah there's a little cubby hole there and this is the gear lever very standard prnds with a plus minus on the left so without a, a pedal shifter you can shift your gear stick to the left and still do a plus minus okay put forward to go up and minus to go down and then down here we have this little head this little storage thing you can go up and you can go, go down and you can it has three position i think and then down there we have a very shallow uh, receptacle to carry put stuff but not very practical because things will just fly when you are driving at speed and then you have this one and it also has a storage space here you can open this one up and you can close it back uh, but most important in this car which i discovered just now is that it has a rear aircon blower and for this price of car i think it's a pretty good idea to have it very very practical now is there room okay considering considering that this car is 2552 it's about in the same ballpark as the vios i think the vios is 2550 and the persona is 2555 so the wheelbase that means the distance between the front and rear wheels is about the same and after that is how they maximize the space so i'm sitting at the back 
and what they've done with the seat is they have put the center or rather the this part of the seat a bit higher so when I sit down and they recline the seat a bit so I lean back a bit so I still have a bit of headroom and still plenty of oh that's about nine inches of space between my knee and the back of the front seat and also what they've done uh, the good car makers do this they make the back of the seat a bit recessed and also they put the little hole at the bottom of the seat like here so you can put your shoes inside and you that will give you a bit more room to maneuver okay then again you have a little coat hook here and also this is an adjustable height for your for your seat belt anchor yeah so you won't have the seats uh seat belt strangling you and okay so looking at the oh my god handles uh, you see one you see two and at the back you see the third one but on the driver's side there isn't one now you know what i mean about having four oh my god handles you don't need two because you need you need only three because the driver doesn't need a oh my god he's the one who causes the oh my god so well you can't be holding the steering and also putting a hand on the handle right so that's why uh well if you make uh hundred thousand cars and each one costs 10 ringgit is hundred thousand times 10 ringgit okay that's uh that's a million ringgit yeah so that's how you save money yeah by not putting things that are not necessary okay so looking at the back okay this is the back of the car it looks pretty nice and what i like about this is you can see there are three headrests yeah okay what it lacks is the center what you call divider that you can put down to be isolated from your other guy sitting there because you don't like him uh, you have an isofix anchor points and seat belts for three and also three headrests so you can sit seat five people and this is uh, something like a bench seat but there are little indentations here uh, to give it a bit of a bucket feel and so seat design is like that it's carried from the front it's all uh, fabric and uh, looks pretty nice with two-tone and what i like about this is actually here the c pillar has got a little see-through window so you don't feel claustrophobic if you're sitting in the in the back seat here and you need to look to the side you can look through that little hole and see what's outside yeah instead of having to move all your head all the way here so that's a very thoughtful feature what is this ah okay it's a drink holder i was wondering what it was yeah here you put a bottle and that's it so there you go that's the volkswagen vento let's take another look at it from an overall point of view it looks pretty neat right and if you just squint a bit it looks a little bit like the passat so this is actually quite a shape is a shape that will i will call it enduring shape yeah this type of shape yeah the word actually is timeless so this is a shape that is timeless and 10 years down the road this car will still look relevant okay so there you go guys this is the volkswagen vento b segment four door sedan 105 ps 175 newton meters seven speed dsg gearbox turbocharged and very nice to drive so the next thing we're going to do is take it on the road so stay tuned anyway Thanks for watching. Until we meet again, bye-bye.